Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker and today where, where we're going is not actually important um, I'm just taking a road that I know there are some pretty views on and that I will enjoy riding on myself because today what we're talking about is a trip that I didn't get to bring you all on and there's various reasons why I didn't but it's a place that I felt I still wanted to tell you all about so the place is called Skellig Vihil or Skellig Michael or ooh, it's also called the Great Skellig, there's lots of stones there. Uh, the Great Skellig if you want to go all anglicised and whatnot. But to me it's a Skellig Michal or Skellig Vihil. I'm not sure which one the actual pronunciation is to be honest. I was never very really good at grammar and tenses and all that. Anyway, basically what Skellig means is in Irish is like a spiky rock or something like that right and that is literally what Skellig Michal is or Skellig Michael we're just going to say Skellig Michael it's easier to, it's easier for everyone to say Michal is actually Michael in Irish my name is actually uh, Michal uh, there you there you go a little bit of interesting tidbit for y'all but anyway that's again not what's important so you will have hopefully by now seen some photos uh, of the Skellig that I took myself on screen everything you see this video will have been taken by me or by Toaster, she also took some photos. But before we launch into it, I'll explain why I didn't bring you on, on, on the video properly. And I, I do regret it in a little way, but I also don't. So it was, uh, it was part of my holidays. Same reason as I didn't record a huge amount up in the north of Ireland. Because that was also part of my holidays. And I don't know about you guys, but what you would do. But when I'm on holidays, I... Not that I think this is work, it's, it's really not, uh, but it's kind of like, you know, it's nice to switch off for a time and that's kind of why um, I, didn't, I didn't turn on a GoPro or anything like that going up there. I just took photos that were originally for myself, but to be honest, it was such a cool place, I really wanted to tell you all about it, so that's why this video is here and that is why I'm rabbiting on about it, but without further ado... Basically, there's a couple of ways uh, to get out to the Skellig. You can go on what's called an eco tour, uh, which means that you don't actually land on the rock itself by boat. Uh, you go around it and get to see it, uh, which is, I imagine, a less physically in intense exercise. But it took us uh, about an hour and a half by boat to get out to the, the Skellig from uh, Port McGee's, where we went from. I can't remember the name of the boat company that took us, but I'll, I'll try to I'll try find it out and put it up on screen. They were very nice, um, very comfortable boat, but I would advise earplugs because it was loud. The boat was loud. Big old clackety diesel engine. Um, but basically, yeah, we took about an hour and a half to get out there. Uh, as we went out, we also went to the, the smaller Skellig, uh, beside Skellig Michael, which is full of, I think it's the largest I think he said it was the largest gannet colony uh, in the world, which is uh, over 24,000 uh, pairs of gannets. So, what's that? 24? Uh, 48,000 gannets, uh, plus all their babbies. So you can imagine how many birds are there. And that, that, the, the ocean around that obviously supports them, um, feeds them and all that for X, X amount of time during the year. But that's where they come every year to breed. And it is honestly... A, a, an unreal sight and again I have some clips hopefully up on screen now and stuff and you know I'll, I'll stay quiet as well so you can actually hear them but absolutely phenomenal phenomenal experience phenomenal views and then you get to the actual Skellig itself and I'm trying to make this all while it's fresh in my head because I like pretty much all my videos this is not scripted this is literally how I remember it and how blown away I was by it. I said it I said it afterwards to uh, Toaster and her sister, yes. I said, you know, this is honestly one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my life. And I make a habit of going to see cool things. So I would hope for people to watch this channel and, and see the places I try to go in Ireland. Um, for me to say that it's 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 high praise. It's high praise indeed from an Irish viewage perspective. But anyway, oh nice view out there to the left. Nice little sunshine view um, you get to you get to the Skellig and you get to land and you're immediately greeted by um, a pretty pretty well modern kind of walkway area um, it's all concreted and stuff and that brings you uh, up and around the rock so you get some really good views straight off the bat and also you get to meet um, 
and some puffins and puffins are probably one of the cutest creatures alive uh, they were kind of the reason for those I can't remember the little the little creatures in Star Wars where they, oh, by the way Star Wars was also filmed uh, on, on Skellig Michael that's part of its claim to fame but uh, we were there for the puffins more so than anything else oh my visor sun visor fogging so hard but anyway so you get to meet these little creatures and I'll have lots of photos up on, like, on, on screen now and they are absolutely gorgeous uh, they have a really funny little call <laughs> they sound hilarious it was described by one of the tour guides there as a like a small chainsaw <laughs> and I can't I can't disagree with her it, it, they make a, a really a really funny sound uh, you also get to see kitty wakes um, full mares which are a cousin to the albatross uh, and obviously massive seagulls I can't remember what they're called I think they're I don't know, I can't remember. But they're they're huge. Um, they're absolutely huge out there and aggressive. They advise not to not to, you know, bring too much food there because they will attack you. And some one absolutely idiot person, right? They said basically all they said was when you get up to the monastery area, uh, which you'll hopefully see photos of during this video as well, unless I've deleted them all, which I didn't. You'll you'll see them. Uh, they said just don't eat food up there. Um, that was the one thing like just don't just don't eat food in there they made a point of saying it twice and it was written on things and one absolute idiot went and ate food up there and brought seagulls in and one of the reasons they said don't eat it up there is because there was baby fulmars uh, living in the beehive huts and you know they wanted to keep seagulls away to not eat them so well done, dickhead. Don't know why you had to do that, but anyway, you're an idiot. You deserve to be called an idiot, so you're an idiot. What else? Oh, no, I didn't mean to come this way. Oh, well, it is what it is now. Look at how pretty it is there. Uh, yeah, so, then you get to make up your way. There's over 600 steps up to the, the monastery. And now, you know, you might be like, okay, that sounds like a lot of steps, and that, you know, is cool in, in, in a way. But what's cool about these steps, and now I'll get into a little bit of the history, is the monastery on Skellig Michael is from the 6th century. So 500 AD odd, or whatever it's called, before, after Common Era now, isn't it? ACE is one of the things, anyway. So 500 odd ACE, or AD, whatever way you want to look at it. That's 1,500 years ago. 1,000... 500 years ago these group of absolute madmen because they wanted to be closer to God through their prayer and all that stuff and their devotion they went out to at the time and this is this is a, something that that another tour guide made made a point to saying and it, it makes a lot of sense to look at that view this is literally why I came this way I just wanted to see that absolutely gorgeous I, I meant to go another road but this one works just fine you got to see it um, so at the time that they went out there, right, that was the edge of the known world. They hadn't discovered America yet. Like, well, America hadn't been discovered yet for our, you know, modern Western society. Obviously, the Native Americans were there and perfectly happy without us coming ruining shit. But um, basically, to their knowledge, to their best guess, that was the edge of the world and they went out onto this rock that was I think it's 11 miles offshore uh, pretty much like very difficult if not borderline impossible to sustain life long term there which they did and we'll get into that too but they went to the edge of the known world all because they wanted to like I said give give a bit of praise um, uh, to, to to their God and they were, they were Christians and that is absolutely insane to me. So these lunatics would have landed up on this rock and they carved, you know, these steps by hand out of, out of this, this rock, by hand. Like with, with manual tools, they just carved it. And I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm just impressed. It's absolutely, and I can't, I can't even def describe to you how insanely impressive it is until you, you know hopefully some of you get to go there and do the landing tour it's insane just looking on it looking at how steep these rock faces are they're they're sheer cliffs 
and they carved out steps and they not only carved out one set of steps they had multiple sets of steps so that if during bad weather they could like climb down a different face and go fishing in a different cove you know away from the wind and the rain these were hardy hardy people um and I, they, look I, I i won't go on too long look up look up more stuff about skellig michael yourselves but basically all i will say is those monks were absolute animals and uh, when you know they they kind of looked over their remains they found a lot of them had arthritis and you know basically if you got to 40 if you lived till 40 years of age you were doing well uh, living on the skellig um it, it could roughly support about 11 people uh, not comfortably you know uh, fresh water was hard to come by they basically built a pretty ingenious system we're gonna go left here they built a pretty ingenious filtration system where they had like multiple cisterns um, that would essentially you know collect rainwater for them and that's what they had multiple ones so it staged it the silt would collect in number one and the fresh water fresh air water would go into number two or whatever and then they also could always clean out one um, because they always had the second one to drink from so it was really 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 Laurie Mar Center I don't know what that is um, it was really bloody impressive like really bloody bloody impressive seeing it and seeing the cisterns and the other thing that is mind-blowing is they built these beehive huts and they built multiples of them they built beehive huts to live in they built bee beehive huts uh, a beehive hut to pray in they built multiple chapels actually uh, again some of them will be on on the screen and this is the up here is where uh, Luke Skywalker was was living and meditating in uh, the Return of the Jedi I'll put the name on the screen I don't know different film names I'm very bad with names in general but th this is where Star Wars was filmed now we didn't go out there because of the the Star Wars link we went out there because of the nature link the puffins and whatnot and just to see it this is it is a UNESCO protected site and it is absolutely it's mind-blowing it's mind-blowing there's uh, the, the the face we can go up to the monastery but on the other peak so it's a two peaked rock um, and we can't go up peak number two. All right, we're going to swing back this way and see if we make a big loop out of this. I have no idea. There was like a place called the Needle and stuff that you know it was like twenty. It's a twenty centimeter wide uh, chunk of rock that you had to crawl across to make it up to this other peak. And there's there's areas that I don't think I have photos of, but people tried. The, the monks tried to build a, a beehive hut up on the edge, and looks like they succeeded. You know, it's fallen away now and whatever else. And. You know, they balance a big slab of rock up there. And th these guys must have just been machines at climbing. Um, you're no longer allowed up onto the second peak unless you're like with an expedition team and have a special permit because it's very, very taxing. It's very, very, very dangerous. Uh, and that's the other thing. If you are thinking of going uh, to visit Skellig Michael, it is worth saying that people have died out there. Uh, it is it is dangerous. It's uh, an unsecured path. So one side is down a cliff off the steps and people have fallen in the past and you know there was obviously debate about closing it at the time and there was debate about making it safer and i'm really happy that they left it as is am i happy that more people could fall and die obviously obviously not but i'm happy that they left the spirit of the place and how it was intended by the monks you know it was built like that that's how they wanted it as insane as they might be um that is how they built it come on i'll let Oh, I've been here before. We, I, I didn't mean to come back here, but we'll pull in here because it's appropriate and finish off the video. No, we won't finish off the video. Actually, I'm not finished yet. But look at that. That's, we'll just pull in there and have a quick look. Cool old wall. See? Religious, religious people of all, all religions, when they put their minds to things, they were so good at building stuff. Now... I assume this means come on it this way. It's very hard to tell. But anyway, so they had, you know, they they, they used to go up there for their uh, extra, how would you put it? Uh, secluded, yeah, secluded prayers. So when they really wanted to be, you know, even more away from people and even closer to, to God, their God, uh, that's where they'd go. They'd go up to this this second peak, and also uh, Skellig Michael was attacked by Vikings several times, and that was one of their little hidey holes. They used to hide water and uh, and and uh, honey up there uh, because it was basically incredibly defensible. 
and just throw rocks down on top of people's heads as they try to climb up and they were going to find it very hard uh, to get up there so that was that was that was where they used to hide yeah you got your puffins you got your crazy cool steps you got these amazing views absolutely amazing views from up there the beehive huts <clears throat> which are also incredible the history of it and just again to reiterate like these monks when they went out there they thought it was the edge of the world and actually so how how eventually people stopped living out there they lived out there for a couple hundred years um, obviously how they replenished their numbers were you know children would be sent out to them to be educated because you know monks would have been educated educated people um, and obviously some of the children decided to go on and, and, and keep on their studies essentially and live out there uh, after another monk had passed away because like I said 11 people odd and they did they did have a little garden up there they did grow uh, certain things but it, <coughs> I mean it was still it would have been a rough existence a very rough existence and that's I don't think there's a huge amount else I have to say about it other than you know so these lunatics lived out there <coughs> they built their beehive huts they built these steps crazy steps like up a sheer cliff rock face and then they went one further and also crawled out a 20 centimeter wide <laughs> needle uh, is what they call it um, in order in order to get more secluded and, and more hermity I suppose for more more strong prayers and yeah I mean that's that's how essentially it ended up so back in the day when they would have started that uh, Christianity and all that would have been a lot more uh, I think secular is the word but it was split split up much more it wasn't you know you didn't have all your different uh, your Augustinians and all that you didn't have all your kind of proper groups your cliques it was very much you know this monastery could have been monastery A B C D E F G whatever they all were just kind of doing their own thing praying their own way and eventually obviously you know uh, America North America South America they were discovered so it was no longer the edge of the world. So I, I don't know, would that, would that mean that it held less importance to them? Who, who knows? Very hard to tell uh, without asking them. And that's the other thing about these monks is they didn't actually keep any written records. So what, what we know about them is from other writings of other, <coughs> other priories, excuse me, other priories, uh, other monasteries, other historians uh, wrote about them. And that's how we have the knowledge that we do have uh, on these these monks and obviously historical records from from the skellig itself from archaeology but that is that is kind of uh that is really it um i it's it's a visit that will live literally forever in my memory um it's a short stay on 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 there you get about two and a half three hours on skellig uh, on the skellig itself for you know a total about three plus hours boat journey time if you leave from Balneskelig which is another town um, it's a, it's an even longer boat journey so either way if you don't like boats it's going to be rough definitely worth sticking it out though because it's one of those things that you see <clears throat> and you'll remember forever you know, like like the beauty the beauty of a, an Aprilia Tuano V4 and back on one of them. I always wanted one and now I want one more again. So oh, well, we've stopped here before. We'll stop here again to finish the video. So you have you you know you have multiple ways that you can get out um, to the Skelligs, and it's just it's just look, it's something that I personally think is massively massively worthwhile if if you're interested in that type of history because it's. It's an incredible place, um, without a shadow of a doubt. It's an absolutely incredible place. I just, I still can't fathom how they did that. Uh, uh, sorry, yes, I meant, meant to say as well. So basically, it would have been a horrifically hard life. And basically how it came to an end was when churches started to become more grouped up. Obviously the, the monks out there would have been asked, hey, do you want to come back and, and live? And, you know, monk do monk stuff with you know, Monastery XYZ on the mainland, which obviously would have been an easier life. So a lot of people had gone soft, you know, and they moved back. A lot of people, a lot of people went soft, you know what I mean? So they moved back onto the mainland and, and lived there. And the rock itself, all the stuff that's on it is still remarkably well preserved. And I think that just shows you, like it's a rough place out there, but they have, 
the monastery up there, all the beehive huts are built in a pretty sheltered location for what is a very unsheltered spot. And that's probably why it's lasted so long. Also, you know, obviously it's very difficult for humans to get out there, so we haven't been able to destroy it because we do that really well. Um, but yeah, that is kind of my little story of my visit to Skellig Michael. I hope this was an interesting video. Please do let me know if you enjoyed it because I, I can try to do more like this if I go places and don't record them. Um, I hope you like the photos and the little clips. Uh, yeah, all I would say is if you have interest in this stuff, try to get out there. It is an incredible history. It is an incredible space. There's incredible constructions out there and the wildlife is amazing. And I'm not going to get into climate change and all that subject um, because it's, it's too long winded and it's too detailed. But all I will say is we might not have puffins forever. We might not have uh, full mares forever. We might not have kitty wakes forever. Although those things will probably survive forever screaming their heads off. Um, but you know, get out and see these bird colonies, even the gannets on the other, the other rock while you can. Uh, same as the Salty Islands down in, in off the coast of Wexford. Well worth a visit. Uh, yeah, that's it really. I don't know how long-winded that was. Hopefully not too long-winded. If you have any other questions about Skellig Michael that I might be able to fill in for you, do let me know in the comments. Do please let me know if you enjoyed this style of video. And yeah, I will leave you with hopefully some itch to get there and see it for yourselves. Uh, it's also near the Kerry Cliffs. You can see them too. Also incredible. It's just an amazing place, and you can see why standing on the Kerry Cliffs, looking out at Skellig Michael, the monk said, I want to go there. You know, if you had that drive in you to, to, to do something like that, I can understand it. Um, and we were out there on quite a peaceful day, water-wise as well. And you, I mean, if you ever wanted to like reset your brain, somewhere like that, for like go for a week or two, that'd be the place to go, obviously. Sands all the people, which is difficult to do since it's a tourist location but you know you know what i mean yeah anyway thank you very much for watching as always a very special thank you to all of my patrons you're all legends i appreciate the hell out of you can't can't say that enough um appreciate appreciate your support of this channel and yeah until next time thank you very much for watching adios outro crew do you remember the last time we were here it was so much less overgrown i think someone had a cut back and that tree is after growing really quick. It's crazy because the last time I was here was just after buying this bike. And now this bike has many more thousands of miles on it. And I love it to pieces. It's just a workhorse. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Bye.